If you just saw the transcript or a few quotes of what happened on Tiger Calls Monday night, you probably came away thinking, Dabo Sweeney yelled at a fan. What's the Clemson coach thinking? He said that fan was part of the problem. Has he lost it? Is he off the deep end? Well, I tell you what. You got to hear the whole thing. The entire interaction between Dabo Sweeney and Tyler from Spartanburg. Because this is uh, this is quite a joust. Tyler came in hot. Dabo probably wasn't expecting this. But Tyler learned a valuable lesson about picking a fight with somebody who speaks into microphones pretty much every day for a living. And if you listen to the whole thing, my guess is you will not come out on Tyler's side. So let's break it down point by point. We will start with Tyler's opening salvo. Appreciate everything you said, Coach. Coach Winnie. Um, it sounded a whole lot like Tommy Bowden. And I'll tell you one thing: Tommy Bowden didn't make the same amount of money as you do. You make eleven point five million dollars a year. Um, but second in college football, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm curious uh, why that salary has led to a 4-4. Four and four. And I know we're going to talk about, you know, just being a couple plays away from undefeated and all that. Um, and I know you're a man of religion. I'm, I'm a big fan. I know you're a man of religion. I'm trying to butter you up after I've now said you don't deserve the money you make. No matter how much a person makes, if you throw that in their face and then suggest that they are failing and not earning that, which it's probably fair to say that Dabo's performance this year does not merit that salary, but there's a better way to do that. Probably not just throw the salary in Dabo's face, but Tyler's not done. Coach, um, before you, you categorize me as a you know, being in the 1.5%, I was going to Clemson games and my entire family going back generations has been going to Clemson games before, you know, when you're in commercial real estate. So I don't, I'm, I'm not going to accept being in that 1.5%. Um, and I, I respect the fact that you're a man of faith. Um, I'm curious uh, if you've ever read Proverbs 16:18, which talks about pride for the fall. Um, I used to, I, I was in the military and I uh, I uh, was overseas for the big run. Um, and so I, I couldn't, couldn't watch all the games. I tried it my best. And, but I always watched the press conferences uh, just for life advice. And I appreciated all that. Something changed after 2018. Tyler establishing his, his Clemson bona fides there. My family's been going to Clemson games for generations. I've been going since since you were in commercial real estate, Dabo. Remember when you got fired at Alabama and you had to go into commercial real estate instead of coaching? Tyler just dig, digging it deep. And of course, Dabo's read Proverbs 16, 18. Tyler, what, what did I just ask him if he's read John 3, 16? You're, you're playing the hits there. You might want to go for a deeper cut if we're, if we're going to quote scripture at Dabo. Also, thank you for your service, Tyler. Uh, as for something changed after 2018, Tyler is going to get into what he thinks has changed. But my guess is what changed is they haven't won any national titles since then. Uh, you're, you're humble, you're hungry, and everything. And I, I always told people, man, Dad, but just listen to his press conferences. But after that 2018 national t title, something changed. And there seems to be a lot of arrogance that came in. Um, there's a lot of friends and family. I mean, three of the ten on-field football coaches are external, experienced hires. Everyone else was an internal hire that had no experience before or was a former player um, or friend. So I'm curious, why are we paying you $11.5 million to go 4-4? Four and four? And it's not just this year. It's been, it's been you know, just a refusal to accept. Again, you got to throw the salary back in his face. And that undercuts Tyler's legitimate beefs, legitimate complaints. 
that maybe Dabo has been too insular. I don't know about arrogance after the second national title, but stubbornness certainly would be a fair word to use. Dabo had something that was working very well. He was convinced that it worked very well and it would continue to work. It is not working as well. He does not seem willing to adapt. So stubbornness feels like a fair criticism here. But again, you don't have to throw the salary in the face. You've already established you don't think you should be making that much money. But Clemson decided to give him that much money. So there's not much you can do about that right now. Again, you're undercutting your own argument where you had some legitimate complaint. This may have been what Tyler should have done in terms of a question. And I would have really enjoyed Dabo's answer to that. And I think you might have gotten a more respectful answer from Dabo. And here's where, just a, a, a note to people who call into coaches shows or who call into radio shows or who lob criticism at, at people they don't know on the internet. You are only owed the amount of respect that you brought to the conversation. Dabo is about to enter this conversation, and he's going to come with the same amount of respect that Tyler brought. And that's not going to go well for Tyler. All right, all right. What's the name? Hey, Tyler. Hey, Tyler. I've, I've listened to it enough for you, Tyler. Listen, hey, you, can, you can have all your opinions that you want, all right? I don't know how old you are. don't really care, all right? But let me tell you something. Um, we won 11 games last year, and you're part of the problem, to be honest with you, because that is part of the problem. It's people like you that do that. All you do is ex the appreciation, the expectation is greater than the appreciation, and that's the problem. And so, you know, we've won 12 10 plus win seasons in a row. That's happened three times in 150 years. So, if you want to know why, Clemson ain't sniff a national championship for 35 years. We've won two in seven years, and there's only two other teams that can say that: Georgia and Alabama. Okay. Is this a bad year? Is this a, yeah. And it's my responsibility. Take 100% responsibility for it. And all this bull crap you're thinking, all these narratives you read, listen, man, you can have your opinion all you want. And you can apply for the job. And good luck to you. All right? But to answer your question, all right, we're second in draft picks. We've graduated 98% of our guys. We're second in wins. All right? We, we, if you, you want to know why, again, I'm telling you, we're not perfect. There's a lot of teams that, you know, Frank Howard never had a bad year. Coach Ford never had a bad year. Nobody, Coach K has never had a bad year in basketball. People have a bad year. Nick Saban doesn't ever have a bad year. And I think that probably is what is clouding everybody's judgment on this thing. Dabo, given the success he's had, probably earned the right to have a bad year. The, the legitimate question is, will this bad year turn into more bad years because he is unwilling to adapt to the changes in college football? That is a, a question for another day because we don't know how he's going to handle this season and the end of this season and, and what happens after this season. So I think that criticism can be lobbed at him if he continues to have bad years, but he's right. You can have a bad year. Everybody has a bad week, bad day, bad month, bad year. No matter how good you are, unless apparently you're Nick Saban. But the part of the problem is the appreciation. I used to tell people all the time, they'd say, what's the difference in Clemson? Let me tell you, at, Cle at some places there's an expectation, but at Clemson there's an appreciation. And what's happened at Clemson is, is we've won so much that even when we used to be the funds in the winning, now, even when you win, people like you complain and criticize the coaches and question everything. You, you, people like you, all right, when I hired Tony Elliott to be the offensive coordinator who never called a play in his life, I'm sure you were critical then, all right, and he took us to two national championships. People like you who just destroy, love to, to destroy people with your comments, all right, I'm sure you've never made any bad decisions. I'm sure you've lived a perfect life. I'm sure you've never, I'm sure you've led a bunch of people. I'm sure you do your job in front. So to answer your question, I started as the lowest paid coach in this freaking business, all right? And I'm where I am because I've worked my ass off every single day. And I ain't going to let some smart-ass kid 
get on this phone and create this stuff. I do like Dabo, a callback for, for those in my generation. For those of you under 25, maybe under 30, who, who've had cell phones for everybody in the house your whole life, maybe don't remember when you only had one house line. And the Dabo talking about the smart-ass kid getting on this phone just reminds me of every parent when I was a kid. Stop playing on my phone! Because, you know, somebody would pick up, they'd be listening to their, their siblings' conversations, they'd be listening to their parents' conversations. Stop playing on my phone! You couldn't prank call somebody because that would tie up the phone line in case somebody important was calling. Couldn't just call the other person's cell phone back then. So Dabo, you know, making us old feel better with that. One thing where he talks about the joy is in the winning and then now even when they win, they get criticized. This really smacks of late Florida era Steve Spurrier. Remember when Steve Spurrier left Florida to go to the NFL? He said the wins had gone from being fun to just being a relief and the losing was just miserable. That's what that feels like. And I it does make me wonder about how long Dabo is for this job because that's not a very pleasant place to be. You know, I, and I don't know that he's going to go anywhere. You know, maybe he pulls a Bob Stoops and retires in his mid fifties. I don't know, but that's a very bad place to be. If you feel like there is no more joy in winning. So the question is, is that just external where, where people are complaining when they win or does it feel that way internally? So if you got a problem with it, I don't care, all right? If I work for, for the Board of Trustees, the President, and the AD. And if they're tired of me leading this program, all we got to do is let me know. I'll go somewhere else where there is an appreciation, all right? It's not just winning. It's how you win. And we are in a – this is a tough year. But we've had 12, 12, 10-plus win seasons in a row. 12. We lost to Tennessee last year. They won 11 games for the first time in like 20 years. We've had eight, 11 win seasons in, in whatever, 11 years or whatever. We've won two national championships. Clemson went 35 years, all right, probably since before you were born, your whole freaking life. And we've won two in seven years. And we earned it. And we beat the best of the best to do it. The best of the best. 12, 10 plus win seasons. So if you want to know why, that's why. Am I perfect? Nope. I'm far from it. I am a, and I am a man of faith. Absolutely. Right? If the Clemson Board of Trustees is tired of Dabo leading the program, they also would have to pay him $64 million to leave. So, one, that's not going to happen. And two, Dabo's probably like, bring it on. I'll take it. But, obviously, they're not paying that. Not going to happen, no matter how bad Tyler feels about this whole thing. And Dabo with the I am a man of faith, calling back to Tyler's question. But here it comes. I'm 53 years old, and there ain't one thing in my life. I, now I, have, I have been a part of failure many times, but there ain't one thing in my life that I've ever failed at, Tyler. <sighs> and here you see that Dabo has raised three children who are now, I believe, all out of high school. This is this is a pure dad moment right here. My dad could do this. I guarantee you one of your parents could do this too, where they could just say your name in a slightly different way. And it was absolutely withering. My kids are young, you know, getting into teenage years. I have not developed this skill as a dad yet. I cannot wait until I can do this. But Dabo, with just two syllables, Tyler, just destroys him. Just destroys him. If... If Tyler hasn't hung up by this point, I don't know how strong he is. I'm impressed because that was absolutely a bomb being dropped on him in two syllables. Tyler! And Dabo brings it home. Never. I ever. I wanted to get an education. I got two degrees. I wanted to be the first college of my graduate with my family. I did it. I wanted to go play football in Alabama. I earned a scholarship, letter three years, worked my ass off, won a national championship. I wanted to get into coaching. I worked my way to being a head coach. 
And when I got this job, and I'm sure you didn't want me to get this job, all right? And 15 years later, I'm still here. And I'd say the results are what they are, and I stand on them. So you don't ever have to call back. I, I, I wanted to get married. I've been married for going on 30 years. I wanted to be a father. I've raised three great sons. If you don't like how I run the program, don't be a fan. I don't care. But I'm the head coach, and I'm going to do what I believe is right for the long term of this program, what's best for the players, and what I think is best for the moment. If you got a problem with that, that's fine. But you're not, I'm not going to sit, you, sit here and let you call. I don't give a crap how much money I make. You ain't going to talk to me like I'm, like I'm 12 years old. You'd be freaking kidding me. Amen. Oh, no. Amen. Wow. So now you've heard the whole thing. My guess is you're probably a little more on Team Dabo than I thought you than you thought you would be when you initially read those comments. And that's that's how it is when, when you get full context of something. And it's interesting because I think Clemson fans wanted to hear this version of Dabo. They're tired of hearing him say, oh, we're this close. We could be eight. No. It's okay to admit there's some strife. It's okay to admit things don't always go right. It's okay to show some fire. That's what he did. Just need a Tyler from Spartanburg to unlock it. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.